there is this effect that you can enable on KDE called Mouse Mark, which lets you draw on your screen. However, it has two issues. The first one is that you have to use Meta Shift and then just move your mouse to draw. You don't even like click, which naturally I would probably want to change. First of all, to click and second of all, not Meta Shift. That's pretty hard to press for me personally. And the second issue is that it doesn't have anti-aliasing and ends up looking very, very choppy. You can try it out for yourself. So I couldn't really use it as a tool to draw on my screen, which in theory would be very, very helpful. And I embarked on a journey to find a better screen drawing program, which I did on stream, by the way. If you're interested in watching that, I'll leave a link in the description to that. So the program is called Gromit MPX. Let me first show off what it can do. You can draw with different colors depending on the mouse hotkeys that you set, you get to decide them. You can also change the width, uh, which I also did for every one of these colors. I'm not gonna like bother you drawing all of them. Then uh, you have an eraser and you can also change the size of the eraser. These are the useful features that I personally find in it. I think there's another one by default. When you draw with the middle click, it will also leave an arrow. Personally, I found it looking kind of ass, so I don't like it, but that's a default. And in terms of defaults, Gromit MPX has quite a few of them that are just silly. For example, let me uh, toggle grabbing of my cursor because it was grabbing for me to be able to draw. I was clicking different mouse buttons. Let's look at this. First of all, the default key bindings is F8 and F9, along with some modifiers. Those are set automatically. You don't get to decide them. You can, though, decide the key that goes with them. This means that while Gromit MPX is running, that key, along with some of the uh, modifiers, will be taken up, and you will not be able to use that key or the key with the modifiers anywhere else. That's fine by itself, but you probably want to use something else aside from shift, control, and alt. Probably want to add meta to the picture so that it feels more like a system hotkey rather than a hotkey in some program. But you cannot change the combinations, which sucks. And I thought that was it. I was ready to go to another program to find something better, but I figured out how to work with this program and actually made it quite amazing. The first thing that I did, obviously, is make a hotkey that launches Gromit MPX. It is Meta F for me, and also the same hotkey can kill it if it already exists. Now let me show you how you can get the same. You would have to go to shortcuts, then add command, and put in the command that's going to be in the pinned comment. Let me actually show it off in a bit better of a fashion that's going to be easier to read. Here it is. Basically, what this command does is that if Gromit NPX exists, then we quit it. If it doesn't, it starts it up. Now, the dash K option, when you start up Gromit NPX, sets the key to toggle stuff, which I already explained I didn't want. The U is going to be the undo key, which once again I don't want. For more information on them, read the help page, because I'm going to show you the way that I use Gromit MPX. Then the dash A flag makes sure that once you open Gromit MPX, you can immediately draw, rather than have to use another hotkey. And dash O is just opacity. I personally don't want my drawings to be transparent, so I set it to 1. Right, so that means that we can enter and quit, but that's not enough. There are a few other options that you can do. Let's draw something and say that we want to clear all of that. Immediately what we can do is just exit and enter again the application of Gromit, but surely there is a better way. And yes, indeed. You can set a hotkey to clear the screen. And how did I do that? By setting another hotkey to another command. So the way Gromit works is super weird. I have never seen this and usually I would expect it to be better. It's like a father. You don't expect him to be good, but oh, come on, how could you be this bad? Out of pocket, I know, but basically, the way that you interact with this program, if you don't want to use the default keybinds with the shift and alt and control, 
is that you call Gromit NPX, but with different flags that do things on the program that already exists, if it does. So the dash C flag would clear the screen in the current working Gromit MPX program. And once we enter drawing mode, anytime we try to use the mouse, we will draw in with one of the colors, right? So we need a way to stop drawing for a while without necessarily removing everything that we drew. And that is Gromit MPX dash T, which I said uh, meta G2. Now I can use my mouse again. And once I press Meta Alt F, everything goes away. Also allied, Gromit MPX does not have a help page, which is also extra confusing, but it does have a man page that you should read to understand the full intent of the program. Here in this video, I'm just explaining the most useful ones that I found to be useful. So at the top, we have options for startup, like the dash A to make sure it's active immediately, the key sims, for the uh, combinations, and then options for controlling the already existing instance, which is uh, new to me. I haven't seen that anywhere, or rather I haven't seen that in a good program that I'm using. And I have a hate-love relationship with Gromit. On one side, I love it. On the other, it's pretty whack <laughs> in the way that it works. Because you might have noticed that, say we uh, launch it, that already t takes some time, but that's okay because we're launching a whole ass program after all. But what if I want to toggle grabbing? That still takes kinda a long time, which is why I'm not a fan of how it works. Because you either have to use the predefined hotkeys more or less, or you have to wait longer. But the configuration of this program is what makes this worth it i think in uh, your home directory slash dot config slash gromit mpx config as well the config file so let's go to gromit dot config that's just my personal file that i sim link to that actual place where it's supposed to be and here you can define your pens basically what you draw with uh, your eraser and the key combinations that result in different colors let me quickly explain what's also explained on their GitHub page, which I'm going to leave a link to. First of all, you can define, believe it or not, this is a variable pretty much. It's so weird that it's in quotes, but all right, it's a variable. The variable is a pen. Here we're defining our pens with, well, the size and the color. That's pretty self-explanatory. I'm not entirely sure on the syntax. I just looked at the preset default by Gromit MPX in their GitHub repository, they have like a preset for defaults. And I just copied and it seemed to have worked. Then I define a bit more pens, which are a bit bigger in size. Same thing goes for the eraser. I have a smaller one and a bigger one. So there are pen and eraser. I'm pretty sure there's also marker in terms of types of, I guess, pens, and something else. For all of them, you should check out the GitHub page once again, but I haven't really found them useful. Uh, there's also arrow, which by default will be on middle click. Then, the way that the combinations work is that default is just your left click without anything. So, I'm just pressing the left click, nothing else, and that's why I get pink. Shift enters big pink. Basically, default is the left click because we don't specify anything in square brackets. If we do, for example, shift, that means that it's shift plus still left click. But then here we define button three. We change the button that we need to press on the mouse and button three is right click. Interestingly, I usually expect button three to be middle click, but it wasn't in this case. So here, button three, right click without anything is yellow, but with shift, it's big yellow, as you can see. Okay, then a similar thing goes for control, and then shift control is big purple, alt, and so on and so forth. So it gets pretty understandable once you see an example of it. Then button two is middle click, which is the eraser. By default, eraser is on right click, by the way. And shift button two is big eraser. So this is how you do your configuration. You get to decide the size, the colors, the uh, mouse 
configurations, which is the meat and potatoes of this program, because you can very easily define a bunch of colors and then use all of them however you would like. I have five colors in total and all of them can be big and I decided that if I press shift as well they get big. So quite a cool program isn't it? Now anytime I need to show off something, not like that but like this, maybe I want to point to some location on the screen I can be like this and then I can even draw around to show it off more concretely. Like, isn't this great? The fact that I can decide my own colors as well, very precisely, by using color codes in hex, or by using words that define colors. So you can do something like, just say red in the quotes, or blue, or I imagine cyan, green and so forth. Once again, they defined which words you can use on their GitHub page, but I personally just took hex codes because in my colors.markdown I just have them. I'll leave a link to them in case you want them. So, if you enjoyed this video, consider following me on Mastodon, press a like, type some comment, maybe have a question or a suggestion. Definitely subscribe so you don't miss my content, but most importantly, stay fresh, cheese bags! And I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!